Learn more with CBeebies on the BBC iPlayer app. Download it today. Have you ever wondered how magnets stay on a fridge? It's because of an invisible force called magnetism. A magnet is an object that has a magnetic field, and that magnetic field either attracts or repels other magnetic objects, like the metal these items are made of. The two ends of a magnet are called poles, and each magnet has a north pole and a south pole, just like planet Earth. Opposite ends of magnets attract, so the north pole of one magnet attracts the south pole of another magnet. But the same sides of magnets push away or repel, so the north pole of one magnet pushes away the north pole of another magnet, and the south pole pushes away the south pole of the other. Magnetic materials are always made of metal, but not all metals are magnetic. For example, gold isn't magnetic. So if you had a gold fridge, your fridge magnets wouldn't work at all. A force might seem like something very mysterious and magical, but a force can be simply a push or a pull. Sometimes forces can cause an object to move, and sometimes forces slow, stop, or change the direction of an object's movement. We can't actually see a force, but we can see what it does, like the force of the wind blowing and pushing leaves. It can be the force of pushing or pulling on dough or modelling clay and changing its shape. It can be the force of kicking a ball when the foot pushes it away. Even a wall can redirect a force and push the ball back. A force can even be something as simple as pulling or pushing to open a door. Just make sure you know which one it is. I get them confused sometimes too. Learn more with CBeebies on the BBC iPlayer app. Download it today. Buoyancy is an object's ability to float in water or air. When you put an object in water, it pushes some of that water out of the way. This is called displacement. But the displaced water always tries to push back to where it was. This force is called upthrust. And it means an object in water has two forces working on it. The force of gravity, which is the weight of the object pushing down, and upthrust, force of the water pushing up. An object like a snooker ball is dense. This is because the material and particles it is made from are tightly packed together. Because it is so dense, the effect of gravity is greater than the upthrust, so it sinks. It is not buoyant. A football is less dense because it's filled with air. The effect of gravity is less than the upthrust, so it floats. It is buoyant. But what about a ship? It's huge and heavy, but because it's hollow and mostly full of air, the force of all that displaced water pushing up, the upthrust, is much stronger than the force of gravity pushing down, and the ship floats. Everything is made up of matter. Matter is another word for the stuff things are made from. Everything around us, everything you can see and touch, is made of matter. Anything that takes up space is called matter. Air, water, rocks, and even people are examples of matter. And how much matter something is made up of affects how heavy or light it will be. Scientists use the term mass to measure exactly how heavy or light an object is. You might think bigger objects are heavier and have a bigger mass than smaller ones because they're bigger in size, like this hippo. But that's not always true. Sometimes bigger objects can have less mass than smaller objects, like this balloon and this banana, for instance. The balloon is full of air, so it actually has less mass than the banana, because the banana is solid. And that is why mass matters. A structure is an object made of different parts. Everything in your home is a structure. So a house is a structure of bricks, wood, doors, windows and chimneys. Structures aren't just buildings. Even a shoe is a structure made of the fabric, laces and rubber sole. Even the chair you're sitting on is a structure of the seat and the legs working together to make sure this doesn't happen. Uh-oh! Shapes are very important in making structures strong, like triangles, rectangles, and arches. The bridge is strong because its curved arch shape means the weight is spread evenly across the structure and not just in one place. The keystone is the wedge-shaped stone at the top of the arch. 
It's the final piece placed during construction and locks all the stones into position, allowing the arch to bear the weight of things traveling over it, like this bicycle. Nice work, Bridge. You're in great shape. Energy is what makes things happen. It's what gives objects the ability to move, light up, bounce or spin. Like this wind turbine. It works by capturing energy from the wind to turn its big blades, which are used to make electricity. That electricity connects to our homes, providing energy that we can use for things like light bulbs, washing machines, and the screen you're watching right now. Even you need energy to do all the things you do, like running or moving around, learning, and even playing hide and seek. And you get that energy from food. Loving that energy. Learn more with CBeebies on the BBC iPlayer app. Download it today. The human body has lots of senses to help us experience the world around us. Here are the main five senses. Smell. We use our noses to smell things. Our nose works with our brain to tell us whether something smells pleasant or bad. We use a sense of sight to see. Our eyes send messages to our brain to tell us what we are seeing and whether it is light or dark. The sense of touch helps us to feel whether something is hot or cold, rough or smooth, wet or dry. Our skin contains special nerve endings called sensory receptors that enable us to feel things. They work with our brain so we know what we are touching. Hearing is another sense. Our ears work with our brain to tell us what we are hearing. It tells us the sounds all around us and whether something is quiet or loud. Taste is one of the main senses. We all have tiny taste receptors on our tongues that tell us whether a piece of food is sweet, sour, salty, bitter or savoury. We all like different tastes. Some of us like sweet foods like fruit and others like the bitter taste of yummy sprouts. Lots of us like both. Every sound you hear is made by vibrations. Whenever you hear something, it's because vibrations are traveling through the air and being picked up by your ears, which then pass that information to your brain. Your brain is really smart. It can interpret what different vibrations sound like. These vibrations are called sound waves. And if you were able to see them, they'd look a bit like this. The louder a sound is, the bigger the vibration it makes, which is shown by a bigger sound wave. The quieter a sound is, the smaller the vibration it makes, which is shown as a smaller sound wave. Pitch tells us how high or how low a sound is. The pitch of a sound depends on how fast or how slow the vibrations are. The faster the vibrations, the higher the pitch and the slower the vibrations, the lower the pitch. So sound is made by vibrations. And it's why you're able to hear me say this sentence. And this one. And this one too. And also this one. Sorry, I'll stop now. Bees love flowers. They're attracted by their bright colours and interesting smells. The bees land on the flower and use a long tongue called a proboscis to suck up a sweet liquid called nectar. As the bees feed on the nectar, their legs rub against the flower, covering them in pollen. The bees then carry that pollen to the next flower they're attracted to, and the pollen stuck to their legs rubs off onto that flower. This process is called pollination, and is how flowers produce seeds, which fall to the ground and make new flowers grow. When the bees have collected the nectar, they go back to their hive and do a waggle dance. This tells the other bees that they found lots of tasty nectar and how far their friends need to go to find it. Animals are brilliant, aren't they? There are so many of them. So scientists decided it would be a good idea to sort them all into groups, based on the things they have in common, as well as the ways that they are different. These groups have different names, like mammals, fish, birds, amphibians, reptiles and insects. One of the ways scientists sort animals into these groups is by what they eat, which is called their diet, and where they live, which is called their habitat. A polar bear's ideal habitat is somewhere nice and cold, like the Arctic. It has thick layers of fur to keep warm, 
lots of water to swim in, and sources of food it likes to eat. What is a fossil? If an animal died and was quickly buried in mud, sand or rocks, its skeleton could turn into a fossil. Over millions of years, more rocks, mud and sand would layer on top and press down and eventually turn into rock. Water passing through the rock slowly dissolves the skeleton bones, but minerals in the water replace the dissolved bone and turn the skeleton into a new kind of rock. And that is a type of fossil. Scientists who study fossils are called paleontologists. By looking at fossils very closely, paleontologists can understand more about the life and growth of a plant or animal when it was alive 68 million years ago. Finding a fossil is exciting because they can tell us so much about the animals and plants that lived so long ago. Learning can be so much fun and you can learn lots more with our CBB shows like Number Blocks, The Go Jetters, Andy's Adventures and lots more. Download the BBC iPlayer app right now.